Hello from an area often referred to as the Great Wilderness in the far northwest of Scotland. I'm here with four photographers on a workshop and we're actually out here for five days and four nights in one of Scotland's most remote and spectacular areas. So this is a really exciting trip for the guys, but also for me. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty special area. Um, so far, we're about six kilometers into our hike and it's actually been fairly easy up to this point. In fact, the, the walk's a little bit boring to get to this rather beautiful place that we're having lunch. Um, because you're really walking along uh, tracks and um, over fairly open ground with little in the way of views. Um, but uh, we're, we're here now and we're going to start heading up once we've finished our lunch uh, to the top of Ben Ari Char, which will give us an amazing view into the Fisherfield Forest area, this, uh, this great wilderness area, and some of the mountains that will be headed up in the coming days. Um, the forecast for tonight, tonight does look really good. Hopefully we'll get a sunset and then for the coming days it looks a bit more unsettled. So hopefully we'll get some dramatic images too, not just the, uh, the pretty sunset shots. Um, so really excited for what's to come. So this is the top of Ben Ari Chai. You sort of forget just how incredible this view is. It's, it really is something else. Um, one of those frustrations with mountain photography is that no matter how good the light or, or how good um, your composition or how good your creativity, you can never do justice to these kind of scenes. You really do have to come here and see it for yourself. And of course, I'm gonna try and do my, my best with it and, uh, and hopefully produce something nice, um, particularly given that these conditions are, are pretty wonderful. We've got really, really clear air and a lovely fresh breeze at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna shoot some summer images first, but I'm never quite going to uh, recreate the experience of being here because that is amazing. We're all out taking photos in these perfect summery conditions. It's actually really nice and relaxing being able to shoot with so much time, the light's changing very slowly. Uh, we're not racing against the sunset or anything like that. So it's a nice relaxed start to our adventure. Um, so we've got everybody out on the hill here um, trying to incorporate some of the rocks into their foregrounds and so on. Uh, but the view uh, that you see behind, which I can't quite make out on the on the LCD screen here because it's just a bit too bright, um, but really it lends itself beautifully to shooting as a panorama. It's a view that I have found difficult in the past to break down into tighter views because there's no really satisfying way to land the edges of the frame. Um, to, to take those uh, sort of smaller subsets of the scene in, if you like. So I'm actually just setting up um, with my telephoto on and shooting a panorama of vertical frames and just trying to produce an image of massive resolution. And then I'm just spending my time looking and seeing what the light's doing. Where do I want the light to be? Well, I certainly want it to be on some of the most prominent peaks at the back. A nice dappled light uh, down there in the valley um, is also going to, to help make the scene look its very best to get that really fresh summer green, rich blue sky kind of feel. 
Um, so it's just a bit, bit of a waiting game and I'm not trying anything fancy here and I, I may not at sunset, but I'm just trying to get that, that perfect illustrative summer panorama. I framed up my panorama something like what you see here. So if I just quickly do an overlay of the framing, then you can see um, exactly uh, how the finished panorama will be. Uh, one really nice characteristic of this view is there's really nice places to settle the edge of the frame. So this mountain here is called Ben Lair and you can see it has that flat top. Well, I just run one edge of the frame straight through that flat top because you can give nice breathing room to the cliff that's coming down there on the right. And similarly on the left, you've got a relatively flat topped hill and then um, the, the jagged peak of Anchelok sticking out the top. So I just want to make sure that the edge of the frame doesn't include Anchelok so there's no distraction on the edge of the frame. And that kind of uh, writes itself in terms of framing. So it is uh, relatively straightforward in that respect. Um, and then you just need to wait for the perfect light, which is, uh, which is what I've got now. So I have my camera set up there. Um, with my 70 to 200 on and I've zoomed in to a point that I can frame it quite tightly and just get the most out of the resolution of the camera. Um, so I'll just turn on the live view there um, and I just start, uh, you know, take, take one shot at a time um, going around. I'm sh shooting in manual mode. I've metered to make sure that I've got no highlight clipping and, and just that it looks visually right on the LCD and I just do 50% overlaps, all shot in manual mode uh, with manual focus to make sure the focus doesn't shift either. Um, and I just uh, go through like this. Shooting every frame I need um, and slightly overshooting in terms of width so that I can crop in afterwards. And uh, that should make for a beautiful summer shot. So this is that image. I think it's six vertical frames stitched together. So the final resolution is over 200 megapixels. And as you can see from this zoomed in view, it really is exceptionally detailed, which is totally unnecessary because I will never print the image big enough to make the most of this detail, I'm sure. But uh, it's there if I do need it. And uh, sometimes it's just fun to have all that incredible detail and be able to explore the scene. Um, so that was a great shot to get in the bag, so to speak, right at the start of the trip. And then we had to set up our camp. Um, but as we did that, unfortunately, the, the clouds started to roll in. Uh, and incidentally, we all got separate tents, of course, because of the coronavirus situation. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the light got progressively worse as, as the day went on. This front came through a little earlier than I'd anticipated. Uh, but since we were there, of course, we did get out for sunset. Sometimes the, the light can change in, in pleasing ways. Um, so we did have a go. We're not far off sunset now, and it really isn't going to happen, unfortunately. You can see this gap to the right here. If we were 100 miles north, we might have had the most incredible sunset, but uh, we're not. And uh, the cloud has, has spoiled it this evening. Um, but I am shooting a final panorama, I think, over into the Torridon Hills over here. So uh, right in the center uh, here, um, there's there's Ben A, but this section of Ben A, and then there's Leach. And I'm just shooting that as a panorama because I think the cloud textures are quite nice and there's some interesting mauvey blue colours coming through. Um, so I'm just going to shoot that and uh, and see how it comes out. Um, it's certainly very, very peaceful up here. Um, you can see our, our tents down there. And this lovely view, I'm expecting a somewhat uh, wilder atmosphere tomorrow morning. But, so it's, uh, it's nice to enjoy this kind of quietness. I think this one actually did come out pretty well. I love the kind of hue shifts that you can get in clouds around sunset, even when you can't see the sun itself. The tops of the clouds are lit in subtly different ways and those different colors filter through the clouds and can create those, those lovely hue shifts. So that's a nice image to finish on. It was the only photo I shot that evening, although the other guys were a bit more productive. Uh, but then after that, we headed back to the tents for an early night and we'll pick it up again the following morning. Good morning from a pretty chilly mountain top on Ben Ari Char. The wind has arrived and uh, it's pretty cold too. So um, we're all in our winter kit and uh, yeah, it feels a bit more like November than August. Um, we've actually started packing our, our kit up. Here's, here's Steve and his 
Van Gogh Banshee, which has done a brilliant job in, in the winds overnight and um, it's probably uh, going to get windier as sunrise happens, which is why everybody is, is packing up now. Um, one of the tents over there is, is actually already down because it wasn't coping as well. Um, so we're going to photograph sunrise and then probably head off the mountain and have breakfast. But of course, it's uh, sunrise that you guys are interested in. So uh, let's go shoot that. And this was an incredibly memorable morning. We had amazing colours really all over the sky as you'll see in a minute. But we started off shooting in the sunrise direction and I really struggled to even <laughs> record a steady video here because the wind was pretty extreme. Um, we're actually looking into the, the origin of the wind um, as, as you see this view here. So there was really no avoiding it there on the edge of the mountain and uh, that does pose some problems particularly if you're using a lightweight tripod which I certainly was uh, you do have to compromise on both your ISO and your aperture to get a faster shutter speed so I was shooting at f6.7 and ISO 400 uh, and there's also an absolutely colossal contrast range in this scene um, so I, I shot an exposure bracket um, but, but the main problem here and the reason it's not really a beginner scene is the edit is so difficult because if you want to retain the very best colour in the sky then you need to darken the sky considerably and if you want to bring some detail into the shadows then you need to lift the shadows considerably and that can create a really unrealistic looking edit with all sorts of artefacts and so on. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on that in future um, but needless to say, if you're a beginner and you struggle with those scenes, uh, you're not alone. I still struggle now. Um, but I did move on after that to photograph uh, from a different area of the mountain. I found a rock to temporarily shelter behind so I can uh, get the mic out of the wind a little bit. But you can see I've actually given up on sunrise in the location, uh, looking into the main view, if you like. And that's because I think the shot I've got is going to be better than when the sun breaks the horizon because of all the contrast issues that will bring and the fact that everything in that scene will be in shadow. Um, so if I just cut back to that, you can kind of imagine that everywhere that you see here pretty much is going to be in shadow the moment the sun breaks the horizon. Whereas if you look behind me, we've got these lovely pinks. Um, the, there's two levels of cloud that are starting to catch color in different ways. And I'm actually shooting ooh, that, that peak just there. Um, with these three clouds above it, get, creating a really lovely, simple image. Um, and I think that this is a much better way of spending my time, even as the sun breaks the horizon. And how incredibly fortunate we were to have this sky, uh, particularly to have high cloud, but at two separate levels. So there's some real interest in the sky there. And you do need that high cloud to get these incredible pinks at sunrise or at sunset. And I just haven't had that many opportunities to, to really capture this kind of color in Scotland. Um, and uh, nice to have those uh, really photogenic mountains at the bottom to provide some additional interest. And I think it is this simpler image that I prefer over the one that I'm just about to show you um, because that sky was so fantastic. But I did shoot a square format image, so two landscape frames stitched together to create a square, uh, which incorporated the islands which lie below the mountains. I think in this particular case, it's just a bit of complexity that maybe that sky didn't need. And uh, maybe this is one of those rare occasions where you should just showcase the sky and keep things as simple as possible um, so I probably will stick with that simpler first image but then I did switch to shooting something different again. The clouds behind me keep moving across the peaks which gives a fairly unusual opportunity to use long exposures to blur the clouds as they move across. The problem I've had is that I don't actually have a six stop or ten stop filter for my telephoto lens in fact I can't think that I've ever done this before if I have done long exposures I've tended to use my wide angle so I've uh, come up with a rather Heath Robinson solution of using earplugs to stick my uh, six stop filter on the front of my polarizer on my telephoto lens and it seems to be working uh, I just wish that uh, some of the first shots I took where I was trying to hand hold the filter uh, were sharp because of course they aren't and, and now I do have some nice sharp images coming out but I've just been repeatedly shooting the same scenes as the uh, cloud moves just to see what kind of results I can get.
And this was the final image I took up on Ben Ari Char and a really nice one to finish on with this lovely colour contrast between the orange of the sunlit hillside there and the blues of the sky above. I also think the, the timing is pretty good here with the, the cloud motion and position sort of subtly obscuring the peak but uh, retaining their, their structure and organisation. Um, so of, of the several photos I took of this scene, I think this was probably the best one and it's quite different to the other images that I have in my portfolio. So uh, almost certainly going to drop this one in. Uh, I will be planning this trip again for next year in May and actually that workshop is now up on my website. If you'd like to join on, on this adventure, I will be taking a, a slightly different route in all likelihood, but it will be very similar uh, in its intent. So uh, if you fancy that, uh, then please do check out alexnail.com. And of course, if you've been enjoying these videos, then please do subscribe.